Morning all, thanks for uh, thanks for listening to this. I've got Owen Taylor with me from the uh, referees uh, um, group. Um, we're just going to spend 10 minutes or so, hopefully a little bit less, just talking about game coaching. Um, Owen and I have been sort of chewing the fat on it and, and thinking that it'd be a good opportunity to give some practical advice around how you coach when you're delivering a game zone and, and how you might referee a game on a Sunday morning. And we appreciate they are two separate things. Um, so... The referee inside with me and the aid, aid, um, aimed at the age grade coaches that are listening in, but the, the game zone and how we coach through it um, is very much aimed at you all. So, Owen, do you just want to introduce yourselves just really, really briefly? Yeah, so my name's Owen Taylor. I'm one of the match official developers for England Rugby. Um, so that's my day job. And then on the side, I'm also uh, a member of the National League match official team. So refereeing in the Allianz Premier 15s, National 1, National 2, Book Super Rugby. So... Yeah, plenty of uh, plenty of refereeing to be going on at the minute, Pete. Yeah, and also I think most importantly, you are a coach as well. You do coach. You are an, uh, an England rugby coach. Blah blah blah. So that does put this into context well for you. Before we get started, um, we have apes as, as our principles for coaching. So that's active, purposeful, enjoyable, safe, and uh, as you're obviously aware of. Can you just briefly explain the principles of refereeing just before we get into the discussion around the game zone coaching? Yeah, so it's a similar approach to apes, really. Um, we've got what's called SELL. So that's safety, enjoyment and equity, learning, laws. Um, and they just allow us to to have some guiding principles, kind of regardless of the environment that we're, we're operating in. Um, for us, obviously, safety is always going to be paramount. That always comes at the top of the acronym, things like that. Um, but as you start working down, they probably become a little bit more flexible. So if you imagine... Uh, coaching in a game zone, game coaching in a game zone or on a Sunday morning. Um, the E might be really heavily around enjoyment. We want to get some some good value out of the session or good value out of the game. Um, maybe the, the, the sort of higher you start getting up into refereeing, it becomes a bit more about equity and making equitable decisions. And then kind of the learning and laws, again, you can you can take from them what you will. Learning might be, again, coming back to that Sunday morning, um, giving the players the opportunity to learn something new about the game or upskill themselves in an area. But learning might also be, we talk about players responding to the referee and how the referee is refereeing. And yeah. that provides that learning for the for the players there. Yeah. And then obviously law law at the end is yeah. it, is important. So yeah, good to that. So we've got apes and we've got cell that, that are similar, that, that are obviously different. And, uh, and, and, and and all the people listening to the call, obviously, in the pre pre day one uh, e learning, we talked about core values, and, and that does link into referee insight. Not for today's discussion, but you know it's massively important that pitch side behaviour and even our players' behaviours whilst whilst playing the game. So this is my sort of question, really, and, and for us to discuss for a couple of minutes is: coaches coach through game zones and skill zones, and when in a game zone, how can we? I wouldn't use the word avoid, but how can we make sure that the that the coach actually coaches the activity? and doesn't spend too much time purely being a referee. So the differentiation there would be if you're refereeing a game on a Sunday, your priority is to referee because you're in the middle, you're refereeing a game of rugby. But when 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 looking after a game zone, we would like to think that the coaches actually coach. What sort of practical advice have you, and you might have done it yourself when you're actually coaching a team and not refereeing, what practical advice would you give to these coaches around that sort of topic? I think there's probably three things when it comes to game, uh, sort of coaching within game zones and things like that, really. The first one's got to be communication. Effective and clear communication is paramount, whether it's refereeing or game coaching, because it helps add to the principles of play, helps add to the flow of the game, and also you get the best value out of the session by being clear with what you want from the players. Um, secondly, I would kind of say that materiality, which is refereeing what matters, yeah, you might have a marginal offside in a game zone or on a, a Sunday morning. Um, does it impact the game? Can we play through? Yeah. Um, I think refereeing what matters is a really important part of, of refereeing and from a coaching perspective, understanding what maybe why some decisions are given and some decisions aren't being given. It's it's a judgment call and going, OK, we need to referee what matters rather than just blowing the pee out the whistle. Yeah. And then that last thing is that it's joined up joined up with coaching around principles of play. We want to add value, flow of the game, contest for possession, things like that. that yeah. We can help yeah. add value. 
That's fantastic because I, I often see it when I'm coaching. Let's I'll pick an example when I coach my kids when they were younger, and I may be seen as a referee, but I'm not actually referee in the game zone. I'm actually coaching the players to help support them achieve the the problem that we've set them within the game zone. Um, and I think I, I personally, if it was me, if we were both coaching a, a game zone together, I think refereeing the game zone wouldn't be a massive high priority. Coaching the game zone and coaching the context of it would be important. Um, yeah, it's good. I'm glad you said that, Owen, because I think some some people, myself included, will have done it in the past where you just tend to referee a game. How can you then possibly coach it? Um, I mean, it's, it's just a subtle change of language in terms of we, we use the term sort of game coaching, facilitators, activators, things like that. We don't always yeah. look to use the word referee or match official because you've yeah. got to be it's situation dependent in yeah. whichever kind of approach you need to take, really. Uh, so f I suppose the defining tip there from us to everyone would be when you're delivering coaching within a game zone, prioritise actually coaching the players. Obviously, yeah. safety comes important on everything we do, but prioritise the players. Let's flip it a little bit now. Move to a Sunday morning. Could be a, doesn't have to be a Sunday morning, but it normally is. You got a match. Um, it's um, team A versus team B under under eighteen girls, for example. What's the difference then now? With you, you, the coaches might be actually refereeing that game. They might be in the middle with the whistle. And I know a hell of a lot of people on this call will do that as a, as a, every Sunday morning. As they get older, we probably get less coaches refereeing, but we still get a significant amount. And I certainly did it all the way up to 18s myself. What advice can you give the coaches to, A, make the game the best it can possibly be, and B, do you think they can still coach whilst they're refereeing a match? Well, I mean, that if we simply come back to the, the principles of refereeing and that sell principle, sticking to those and kind of working out what's situation dependent, um, and using cell to your advantage. That's 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 the whole game. Whether that's right down at the bottom of the pyramid, first ever game, touch tag type things, all the way up to the uh, the stuff in the Premiership in the World Cup. It's all we can all base it around cell principles. So for me, the most important thing is having uh, a facilitator or a referee that has got a good sense of occasion and a good sense of their refereeing environment. Again, talking about what we said earlier, E might mean equitable uh, in a national one game, first versus second, um, with the winners going up into the championship, makes a massive, massive difference. Yeah. But again, using if you've got the, the new age brackets and things like that, first games, actually, is, is it all about enjoyment and adding to the value of the game? Um, yeah, absolutely. Can I so ask I think, you I think that's I... important. Would you say that if you're refereeing a National One game on Saturday or you're refereeing an Alizan Premier Premier 15s, are you still coaching the players, at, even at that level? And and if you are, do they really need to know at that level that you're coaching them? It, I, I don't know if it's coaching as such, but it's using that, that cell principle of learning to get the players to react to what you're doing. And that reaction will be different, again, depending on the environment you're refereeing. If you use your example of sort of under 18s girls, um, it might be that they're developing some of their skills. Some people might be new to the game, things like that. Can you use learning in a different way? Yeah, you can talk to the players in a different way. You can maybe coach them through the tackle process. You can you can do different things that you maybe wouldn't do uh, yeah. on a Saturday in yeah in an Allianz Premier 15s game. Yeah. We're still we're still using that opportunity to get the players to learn, but that's more getting them to react to what we're saying rather than, yeah. oh, I'm learning something new about the game type thing. Yeah, good to hear. The, my, my final sort of question is around the laws and regulations. And I know that most people that are on the IRCA will, will be coaching one age group. So let's say you're coaching under 15 boys. You'll know the regulations for that age group and you'll move up and down and whatever it is. is. What advice have you got for interpretation of the laws? So forget the actual rules for each age group. That's up to each coach to understand that for their team. But what about the laws and the complexity of them? And could you could you put that into sort of a really, really short summary of how can we make it easier for the coaches to understand them? Because it's really complicated, especially for you doing it almost full time. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those that you could have a completely separate call five times longer talking about law, really. Um for me, it's about making it as simple as possible and being able to to interpret and understand things around materiality. 
So for me, a good decision is a decision that's accurate and is required at the time. All right. Yeah. Now, if you're looking to upskill around coaching, um, you would go on an IRCA. If you're looking to upskill around refereeing, there's loads of CPD. There's loads of free England rugby CPD just to have a look at and and sort of be in control of your own knowledge, I suppose. Yeah. Um, have a look at the e-learnings, have a look at our webinars, things like that. We cover a, a wide spectrum of stuff. So if it's a case of, oh, I'd like to learn a little bit more about refereeing the scrum, let's say, or, or, or what referees are looking for in the scrum, go find out, go have a watch uh, and yeah. kind of skill yourself that way, really. Yeah. Hey, mate, thanks for the conversation. I, I hope... Um... I hope I hope this has benefit to everyone that's watching it. I hope it's it's meant to be quite like like light touch. We're not meant to go into too much details, but um, as I say, it's not just about refereeing. This the, the the purpose of this ten minutes is it's about how can you coach within the game zone. Um, I hope you're all enjoying the webinars uh, wherever you are with them. Um, they will make your journey so much better and hopefully add to it. And um, and we look forward to seeing you on day two in uh, May May June. Thanks, Owen. Have a great day. Cheers, Pete. Thank you. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers.